Oh, okay. Well, gang, who missed class today and you didn't see it, what we were demonstrating is the fact that you can get floating point errors. Floating point errors are when you are not expecting things to be rounded off, but they are. And so we added 0.1 to itself 10 times and thought that that would equal 1. But it didn't. So instead we took the difference between that result and 1 and checked to see if it was less than some small margin of error. And it was, so we printed close enough. If you're watching this at home, don't need to do all that, right? It's okay. Just accept that. That is how you check to compare two floating point numbers. Instead of checking to see if they're equal, you don't do that. Instead, you take the difference between the two values you're trying to compare, and then you check to see if they're less than a margin of error. And that's mentioned on this slide right here, 15. They don't give you any information about it. The, the book probably goes into it in a little, little bit more detail. So the logical operators, ampersand, ampersand meaning yes, and vertical bar, vertical bar meaning no. Not, what am I saying? Ampersand, ampersand means and. And vertical bar, vertical bar means or. And for and to be true, both sides have to be true. If A and B, well if A isn't true, then we're not going to do it. Both of them have to be true for the result to be true. Or means only one side has to be true. It's okay if both are true. So if we are employed and we are a recent grad, then we qualify for the rate. That's how we read it. When I'm typing it in, I may say and, and you're supposed to translate in your head, oh, ampersand, ampersand. And I apologize to the Python programmers. As we mentioned last time, I know that you use A and D in there, and we could even use a pound sign define to create a macro so that we could use the word and instead of the two ampersands to get that to work. Determine a user's loan qualification. Is their income greater than the minimum income? Or are their years greater than the minimum years? Then print, you qualify. You said that's or? Yep, that's an or. The two vertical bars, which is the shift of the backslash above the inner key. And if these things aren't true, if both of these are false, if neither one of them is true, it comes down here and it prints, you must earn at least minimum income or have been employed that many years. So typically, if we think about like ranges, we're going to check something to see if it's in a particular range. You use AND to see if something is within a range. Use ampersand, ampersand and to check within a range, right? So int t is equal to 12. We want to see if it's between 10 and 20. If t is greater than or equal to 10, ampersand, ampersand, t is less than or equal to 20, then yeah. C out, arrow, arrow, t is within the range, backslash in. What if you wanted to check to see if it was outside of the range? You would use or. If t is less than 10 or t greater than 20, print outside the range. And as always with logic, there are other ways you could express it. You could use the not symbol to express it, or you could throw in an else in there to do it. But in general, if you're checking for within a range, you use and. If you're checking to see if something falls outside of a range, you use or. So use bar bar line line shift backslash shift backslash I'm going to just call that or from now on use or to check outside of a range if parentheses t less than 10 shift line shift line or t greater than 20 
to sec C out, error, error, quote, T is out of range. Yes? Uh, where's the uh, or in the key It's above the inner key. It's the back, it's the shift of the backslash above the inner key. Yeah. It, it, it looks it's not a straight bar, it's like two little bars. Yeah. It's one of the mystery keys. We are not arcane programmers because we know where that symbol is. <laughs> the other symbol that no one ever knows is the tilde, which is the little wiggle that's yeah. underneath the, the shift of the back apostrophe, which is the key under the escape key. But we're not going to use tilde, I doubt. It does have a meaning, but we're not going to use it, I believe. So, C out, arrow, arrow, T is out of range. Backslash it. So when, whoopsie, where'd that go? When this runs, since I put T as being 12, it's not going to print T is out of range. I could run it once, make sure it printed T is within range, and then I could change the value of that, run it again, and make sure it was outside of it, just to make sure that my logic was good. Yep, T is within range. I'm going to change it to a 22 because I know that's out of range. T is out of range. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, why didn't you just use an else? Yeah, you, I could have used an else and made a print T is out of range. But sometimes you don't want to do one thing or the other. Sometimes you just want to do one thing or nothing. And if you're doing one thing or nothing, it's kind of wasteful to have like an empty else clause. You'd have to kind of cringe it to get it to work. You could use the not operator, though, which is the exclamation mark. I try to avoid using not because it's like double negatives. And I think I said that before. Like if you say I ain't not going, you have no idea whether I just said I am going or I'm not. Right? Your eyeball finds it hard to process the logic if there are nots involved. When I say not, you type in the exclamation point, just like when we did not equal, right? X not equal Y. So we could do this. If, parentheses, T, wait, wait. If, parentheses, exclamation point, T less than zero. I'm going to change that to a one. If parentheses, exclamation T less than one, in parentheses, C out, arrow, arrow, I'm positive, backslash in. It would have been a lot easier for me to read and understand what I was writing. My brain did a couple of backflips just trying to write this example. If I made a say if T greater than or equal to one, print out I'm positive. But this does the same thing. The not means evaluate everything that falls after the not and inflict its truthiness. So if t is in fact less than 1, that is going to be true. And then we flip it to being a false. And so what's the not positive? Pardon me? What's the exclamation? Not. 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 Yeah, it's pronounced not. So if not t is less than 1. Yeah, if not t is less than 1. In other words, if t isn't less than y, right, right. If not t less than one, sorry, I just got there. No, totally, totally, totally fine. And so this would have been so much easier to say to pronounce if everything if I just written if t greater than or equal to one, right. But logically, they do the same thing. So I could have used this this expression and thrown in a not in order to figure out that it was out of range or something like that. You just have to pick the logic that reads clearly to your eyes. It doesn't take the computer any more time to figure out this than it does this. And so if this was easier to read, it would be the way that I would want to do it. So not just flips the truthiness of it. If we have a... Uh, I drew a truth table last time, did I not, with the T's and the F's on the screen? Right, so if you have, you know, X and then you have not X, a false becomes a true, and a true becomes a false. And so if you have, you know, X equals 3, and Y equals 4, and 5, and you do this, if not X equals equals Y, is that going to be true or false? The way you read it, is first, is x equal equal y? 
Is that a true statement or a false statement? False. That's false, okay. And then this is going to flip it and make it true. So that statement does, eva in fact, evaluate to true. Now that's hard enough to think about that that's why they came up with x not equal to y. Those two things mean the same thing. And this rolls off the tongue a lot better, right? If x not equal y, and as, and as soon as I have reinforced that, every time I say not, I mean put the exclamation point in there. I always wonder why it's an exclamation point as opposed to a question mark. Why are they not both marks? Oh well. Things that keep me up at night. So logical operator notes. The exclamation mark has a higher precedence than any of them, followed by and and then or. And I talked about why last time. It's because and can, is treated as logical multiplication and or is treated as logical addition. That one looks pretty clear. So if you have A and B, the result of a false and a false is a false because both sides have to be true. If you have A, if you have false and true, well, no, it's still false because both sides had to be true. If you have true and false, both sides had to be true, and so it's still false. True and true, okay, that's the only time that the AND operator will give you a true is when they're both true. And that looks like multiplication. Zero times zero is zero. Zero times one is zero. One times zero is zero, and one times one is one. When you're doing multiplication, the only time that something is non-zero is if both of the things you're multiplying are non-zero. So how about or? Same idea, but only one has to be true. So false or false, yeah, that's definitely going to be false. Because if neither side is true, the result has to be false. Just like zero plus zero is zero. But if one of them is non-true, then the result, excuse me, if one of them is non-false, if one of them is true, then the result is going to be true. Just like if you add something to 1. So 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 1. Go to 2, right? But we're just pretending. We've got two states. We've got true and false, where false is 0 and true is non-zero. False is the absence of electricity or magnetic charge, and true is the presence of electricity or magnetic charge. And since multiplication has a higher precedence on our priority table, you do multiplication before you do addition. 1 plus 2 times 3, you better do that 2 times 3 first. Ands are higher on the precedence table. And if you're ever writing an expression and you can't figure out what would be done first, go ahead and just group parts of it with parentheses. So and has higher precedence than or, and not has the highest of all. So how about we say not has the highest precedence. So if you had this, x is equal to 10, y is equal to 20, z is equal to 30, and he wrote an expression like this. If x is greater than 5 and y is less than 5, or x is equal, equal to 10, something like that. How would we be able to figure out if it evaluated true or false? We might just start going left or right. And in this one particular case, left or right would work. But what you really do is you look for all the ands. This has to be done first, because that's clustered with an and. So to solve that, we would do the effect of putting this inside parentheses, like that. Do this first. Well, now we can do that. Is x greater than 5? 
Yes. That's, so that's true. But for and, both sides have to be true. Is y less than 5? No. no. So this evaluates to false because even though that was true, that was not true. And since they weren't both true, it's false. Okay, so now if false or x equals equals 10, is this true? Yes. That's true. And so since this is an or, only one side has to be true. And so this whole expression did in fact evaluate out to being true. Mm. The bar, vertical bar after the parentheses mark on the y mark is less than 5. Oh, it it's a cursor. It's a cursor. It's a cursor. It's a cursor. Right. Going. Yeah. That's the new secret operator. The, the triple bar. I'm going to do a little bit of cut and pasting. Just to iterate that this is treated as if it were this. Since and since the ampersands have higher priority, higher precedence. Checking numeric ranges with logical operators. I just talked about that. To see if something falls within a range, you use ampersand. All right, our grade system does not allow scores of less than zero or greater than 100, so we use and to see if they're within those ranges. Is the grade greater than or equal to zero? and it's less than or equal to 100, then yep, it's a valid grade. All righty, now their logic is bad here. If the grade is less than or equal to zero, or the grade is greater than or equal to 100, it's an invalid grade. What is it going to print if I have a grade of 100 and then it goes into this statement? Is 100 less than or equal to zero? No. no. But is grade greater than or equal to 100? Yes. Yeah, and so it's going to print invalid grade. Yeah, they should have removed the equal sign. And I've mentioned this before, but the opposites are not what you think they ought to be. The opposite of greater than is less than or equal to. And the opposite of less than is greater than or equal to. And the opposite of equal equal is not equal. That's comparison. That's the comparison operator. I'm still not sure I understand. Equals is still comparing something. Equal doesn't compare. A equal assigns something. Let me write a statement and then I'll explain the terms. X equals 3 if X equals equals 3. This is the assignment operator. It copies the value of 3. We say equals because that's how we think of it, but it actually assigns 3 to X. And now we want to see if they compare, just so that the compiler can know the difference between those two things. We wouldn't want that 3 to be copied into the X like it is here. So they can compare and contrast. Right, right. So, so they pick two different symbols, and they just have both. The way they contrast it is just by doubling the symbol. And then the uh, exclamation point equals, I think I missed that. That means not equals. It's the opposite of this one. Okay. So if we were to put comments here, we would call this, right? x is equal to, but if we did if x not equal to 3, we would say if x is not equal to 3. So the first one would be comparing and the second one would be contrasting. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, right, 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 exactly, yep. And this assigns the value, assigns 3 to x, copies the value copies the value into it. And so these are the opposites, and the reason that they are the opposite is if you have x is less than 3, and then you think the opposite of x is greater than 3, well that's not true, because what if the x is 3? 3 less than 3? No, that's false. Is 3 greater than 3? No, that's still false. That should have been true, because we were trying to get the opposite. So to take the opposite of it, we should have done now you could get all snarky and tell me that you could also take the opposite by doing that. Using the not. And yeah, you can. Like I 
like I said, avoid using knots unless it absolutely perfectly makes 100% sense to you because it makes our brains hurt to look at it. The computer handles it just fine. Menus. A menu-driven program. Execution controlled by the user selecting from a list of actions. And the menu is a list of choices on the screen, which can be implemented using if else if statements. If else if? Yep, is, else if, if else if. if. If you did Python, it was called elif. Here we have to use the whole word else if. If. Instead of just else. We'll give an example of that. All right, so we're going to write a little program where people can buy a car. And if the car is one kind of car, it costs a certain amount of money. And if a car is another kind of car, it costs us another certain amount of money. And if they add some options to it, like a AM, FM cassette radio, then it costs a little bit more. And if they choose power steering, it costs a little bit more. So yeah, we're in the 70s. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to present them with a menu. See how error, error, quote, what type of car do you want, question mark, backslash in, semicolon. And we better give them some choices. What do they want? They want either a Camaro or a Pinto. Like I said, the settings. So see how arrow, arrow, quote, one for Camaro, comma, two for Pinto. And if you recall, Pintos were the ones that could explode if you hit their bumper. I had one, and I wanted a bumper sticker that said, I caution, I explode on impact, but I never did get that. That would have been cool. <laughs> and then we're going to ask them what option do they want. Now this is going to be a bit silly because it's only it's going to be a binary option. Maybe pinstripes yes or no or, or so I don't know. Anyway, see out error error quote. What option? Question mark backslash in semicolon and then see out error error quote one for AM, FM, comma, two, four, cassette, backslash it. Now I've skipped something. I didn't let them type in anything. I'm just kind of broadly setting out the guidelines of what we're going to do. And then I'm going to add a few comments here. Here's my comments. Am I spelling Camaro wrong? No. Alright. Alright, this is bugging me. No, it's the second time the second time you Yeah, said yeah, okay, it is with the double A. Alright, okay. So Camaro's cost six thousand dollars. Whereas Pinto's cost three thousand. AMFM costs one hundred dollars cassette player costs three hundred dollars just kind of mapping it out in my head because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ask them what type of car we want and then we're going to have a cin error error statement to let them type in what kind of car and we're going to need a variable to hold it maybe just car right brand or Model. Model sounds good. And then we're going to ask them what option. Error, error, one for AMFM, two for cassette. And so we're going to need to store that in another variable, maybe called option. Then we're going to have some if statements down here based on these menus. Won't the computer get confused uh, if they put one the first time? And then the computer's going to think, oh, they want a Camaro, and they didn't want AM and FM. Yeah, so we're going to have to store those into separate variables, separate. and we're going to have to ask okay. two different pieces of input. But we could make these things different choices, you're right. Mm -hmm. We so could be. the user is going to be okay before the computer reacts. Hopefully, right, right. Okay, so I want two variables to hold in 
the type and the options. So int space model comma option. Or let's call this one radio because it's what kind of radio it is, right? So int model comma radio. So after that first menu, let's let them type in. So CIN greater greater model semicolon. And then underneath the second pair of C out statements, we're going to do CIN arrow arrow radio. CIN greater than greater than radio. So since we're trying to calculate a total cost, we better have a variable called total or something like that to accumulate the cost as we, as we process. So price, total. I like price. Go with price. I could tack that on as one of my variables up here, right? So int model comma radio comma price. I don't always do that. I don't always make my code all clean and pretty with all the variables being, de being declared up at the top. One reason I don't like to declare my variables like this is because then I can't put comments saying what those variables are. If I had these all listed separately, one per line, I could say int model, and then after a comment, one equals Camaro, two equals Pinto. And the int radio, and then after the comment, one equals A and F and two equals a set, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go with it, you know, against those drawbacks, just because I'm not adding those comments. I should, but not gonna. These prices, we could make these constants. I think I'm not gonna. I think we're just gonna go straight into processing this statement right here. We have stored something in model, and now we're going to handle it. So if parentheses model equals equals one in parentheses price plus equals six thousand. We're adding six thousand dollars to our price. And then the next one's just gonna be a repeat of that. And we could make it else if. Else Wait, if. Y plus equals again? Pardon me? Y plus equals again? It, the first one did not have to be a plus, but later on when we start adding on the costs of the options, uh, they will be plus. So I just, right. for consistency's purpose, okay. started it off. Since I set price equal to zero up here. No, you're right. Look at that. I did not set price equal to zero, so that would have been a syntax error. So why not just do that? And then else if model equals equals two parentheses price equals three thousand. And now we're going to add one more else just to handle the case that they typed in something we don't know what it is. Else see out arrow arrow quote unrecognized car model backslash in. We don't want to ever see that error, but if we had accidentally typed in a three rather than a two, we need to know that because otherwise we're going to think that we're going to be buying a car for free. And are there ways to fix that? Yeah, you'd probably want to put your menu in a loop and you would keep looping until they give you a, gave you a good answer. All right, now we're going to handle the options, the radio. Firstly, let's compile a test before I start scrolling way up and, and way down too much. All right, it's not going to do anything. I haven't made it right. But it did compile without syntax errors. I want the, that to be true for you all as well. So now we're going to handle the radio menu choice. If parentheses radio equals equals one. Now we better use plus equals. Price plus equals 100. Semicolon.
else if parentheses radio equals equals two in parentheses price plus equals three hundred semicolon. And then we can print out the price. Do we not put else again? You're right. I forgot to put the error handling else. Else, see out error, error quote, unrecognized radio choice. Why did we include the plus this time around? Because if our car is 6,000, we don't want to then turn around and say that it's equal to 100. They want to add what the radio clause is. Yep. But I could have created a different variable, you know, called options and then set option equal to 100, else option equal 300, and then added those two prices together later. So there's a, there, we did not necessarily absolutely have to use plus equals. All right. Now we can see out error, error, quote, your car will cost space or dollar sign space dollar sign in quote arrow arrow price arrow arrow e and DL. now we could make this program a hundred times better if we worked on it basically I just wanted to demonstrate the idea of menu choices we gave them little menus all they had were like two options but we could have given more options That'll be the next thing I do is that after everybody gets this compiled, I'm going to want you to add a third car type. Add a Ferrari or something like that, something much more expensive, and then add another radio type. Add a CD player. We're in the 80s, and it's going to have a different cost, too. Let's make sure this works. All right, one for Camaro with a cassette player. $6,300. I'm going to run it again. Um, I want a Pinto with the AM FM radio. Much more for affordable. $3,100. I don't know. It's going to I mean, 6000 I press option one for Camaro and then option two for the radio. Let me see if I can find where I did it. The thing that said uh, I am positive, that statement right there. It's giving me a warning, and I didn't notice that. When I build it, it still works. But if I go and I look at my error list, like we should, view the error list. If it would let me expand the error list, I'd be so much happier. There we go. It says unsafe use of type rule in operation. If you see an error and it's got it's in the 4,000 level, that means it's a very minor error and it's just about guaranteed to work. But that something is a little bit off. And I guess all I could do to think about fixing that would be to do this. Come here and maybe if we put extra parentheses around that, is that going to fix it? Let's find out. Okay, that did. The point still stands that the exclamation not reverses the truthiness of the thing that comes after it. It just didn't like the fact that um, I had not clustered this inside parentheses. And I wasn't expecting to get that error. I don't know exactly how to explain why it's there, but I knew how to correct it. Do you want the warning. exclamation mark in there? Or don't? I, I wanted the exclamation mark. It, it was just giving me a warning because I had applied it without it, but it was not being, exclamation was not in front of a Boolean value. Oh, it was I, just in front of T. It, it's exactly, I got it. Yeah. I, I was yeah. sitting here going, so. Dang. You ought to be able to fix it out. You know, maybe come to or something or ignore it, but that would fix it. I left out of parentheses. Okay. Anybody else? All right, so. You know, expert programmers, we're going to add a couple of options to this. All right. <laughs> All right. 
So let's add some other car types. We have car types one and two. Three is going to be a Ferrari. And somebody pick another type of car. Lamborghini. Lamborghini. Don't pick a car. I don't know how to spell. Lamborghini. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All righty. All righty. So Lamborghinis are going to be even more expensive than our Ferrari. Our Ferrari costs thirty thousand dollars. Our Lamborghini costs a hundred thousand. And for our radio types, these are model types that I want you to add. We're going to add radio types of CD player, which is going to be five hundred dollars, and we're going to have some super duper Bluetooth player which is $700. So modify your program to support those two extra models and those two extra radio types, meaning you're going to have to go and modify the menus that are displayed, where it said one for this, two for that. And then you're going to have to go and modify the if statements as well. Wait, so are we giving them four options, or are we only yep. giving them two? Yep, yeah, we're giving them four options. Okay. So. Do we do it our way, or do we have to do it like how you I want you to do it any way that makes sense to you. Okay. But I'm, I'm going to start. I'm going to move my cursor to where I would first start making the change, but I'm not going to do it, right? So I want to add Ferrari and Lamborghini. I would find where I listed the cars off, right? And I might add on a couple more cars, you know, with another line. Three equals Ferrari, four for Lamborghini. Okay, so I want to make this loop for as long as they want to keep buying cars. So here, that this is effectively the top of our car program, right? The rest of it was just all a bunch of silliness involving, you know, and positive and not negative and ranges and stuff. Here's where our car program really begins. So let's do this. Let's make a variable called repeat. So string repeat equals quote y quote colon. Not colon, where'd that come from? semicolon, and then while, parentheses, repeat equals equals quote y, end quote, end parentheses, open curly brace. Now as soon as I type that open curly brace, it added a close, and I don't want that, so I'm going to delete that close. And now I have to do a whole bunch of tabbing. And so I'm going to want to tab it all at the same time. How do you tab multiple lines at the same time? You highlight them all with the, you know, holding the shift button down in the cursor, or you just use this, right? So I'm going to tab that thing, stuff over. I'm going to tab this stuff over. I'm going to tab this stuff over. I'm going to tab all, everything over until I get to this line that says your car will cost. That's the end of our loop but we need to ask them if they want to calculate another car. So let's go ahead and put our closed curly brace there because that's the end of the loop. But before it, let's ask them. See out error quote, do you wish to buy another question mark? Y slash N, end quote. Backslash N. I guess, why not? And then CIN arrow arrow repeat. So here's what our code looks like now. 
since I pushed the system pause and this stuff down there at the bottom, you can't really see it anymore, but there it is. This is how the end of our code now looks. Could you go back to the top? Yep. Where you wrote Are the braces required? Yes. Why was I able to leave off the braces here? Because if you only have one statement in a block, the braces are optional. But I could have done this. I could have put the braces here as well. Let's go up here. There are times when you can get away with without the braces, but that's if you only have one statement as the body, as the block. Oh, and I meant to talk to you about the if and then semicolon. Um, I'll do that. Yes, ma'am? I'll scroll down as soon as Rochelle is done looking at the top. So I don't know why I'm getting weird. Yeah, you're just making room for everything, and then you're going to go all the way down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Too much space. Yeah, and now you need a closing curly brace. Right, right. to get from that level to that level. Right so here, just right. add one in front of the pause. Yep. Wait, so are we not checking what your S is for, or are we good? Well, let's run it and see if it worked. Run your program. If you put a semicolon here, it's going to give you a warning for a darn good reason. This is not one of those warnings that we should be able to avoid. I mean, uh, it may just be a warning. It may not be an error. But the problem is, is what's happening? is that if we put a semicolon there, it's being treated like this. That's how it, tra it's how it translates it to its line. Is the radio equal to one? Great, do nothing. And then it adds 100 no matter what, whether it was equal to uh, one or not. So anytime you see a semicolon there after an if statement or after a while statement, just imagine what it would look like if you had done that instead. And hopefully that tells you why it's not going to work. Otherwise, you're just going to have to burn it in your brain. Never a semicolon after an if. Just you'll just have to make the error, you know, five, ten times, and then you'll never do it again. Sometimes it'll give you an error message like that, and sometimes it won't. All righty. I do not give you all enough homework. You're saying yes, you do. Seven. Yeah. So we have a new homework assignment. I need to make the Dropbox for it. But if we go out and look in the homework folder on the contents, sphere density. Here's how I want the program to work. It's very similar to this one, except it's not going to be doing addition like ours did. It's going to do some multiplication. But no biggie. We can we can handle that. Now, yeah, I'm sure you can. <laughs> Especially since you can text me day or night. All right, so anyways, here's how it's supposed to work. Write a program that calculates the weight of a certain size sphere based on its material. You ever wanted to know how much a gold bowling ball weighs or a golf ball made of ice? Well, now we're going to know. So we will calculate the weight of a sphere based on its size and material. Choose the material of the sphere. One, ice, two, aluminum, three, or gold. All right, I want gold, of course. Choose the size of the sphere, a marble or a golf ball or a baseball. Well, of course I'm going to go for the baseball. The density of the object is, well, you don't know yet how you calculated that. I'll show you. The radius of the object is that, well, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. The volume of the object is that, and the weight of the object is 72 pounds. Now, that's actually kind of boggling. A baseball chunk of gold weighs 72 pounds, and it's actually accurate. And so you know those, you know, video games where your character finds a chest full of gold, that chest full of gold would weigh a ton easily. There's no way you're due to be carrying it out of the dungeon. So anyways, here's what the program's going to do. It's going to prompt the user with a menu of size based on sizes. Marble, golf ball, baseball, but there's more sizes I want you to add too. Basketball, beach ball, and exercise ball. And then it's going to prompt the user with a menu of materials. Ice, aluminum, gold, but that's boring. 
We have more materials than that. Iron, cedar, soil, paper, and osmium. What's osmium? Osmium is a, a metal that is actually the heaviest metal. Mm -hmm. It's heavier than uh, uranium. It's heavier than gold. It's the densest metal. That's all I know about it. <laughs> it's heavy, man. So, based on the choice, based on the choice of the material, and the based on the sphere, we will calculate our total. The density is based on the material. So you're going to have some if statements. If material is equal to 1, then the density is 55. Else if material equals 2, density is equal to 168. Else if material is equal to 3, density is equal to 1203, and so far. Then you need to calculate some diameters. So you can have a separate block, just like we did for our car radio. If the material equals 1, it's a marble, and so diameter equals that. Else if material is equal to 2, then the diameter is that. Else if material is equal to, you know, 3, wait. Not material anymore. If, this, if the shape is equal to a marble, then it's that. Else if the shape is equal to a golf ball, then the diameter is that. And you use that di diameter to calculate the volume using that equation. So what, but look, check it out. This uh, is giving you the diameter, and this is giving you the radius. So you're going to have to change diameter to radius. I'm not going to fail you if you don't do that, but the way you get radius is it's just half a diameter. And then you calculate the weight using this formula. You know the volume based on the radius, and you know the density based on that if table we're going to set up. If material is equal to 1, density is equal to 55. And so you're going to do that calculation, and you're going to print the results. And the good news is, is that since we have spring break, you have an extra week to do it. So cancel your trip to Cancun. Yeah. <laughs> I worked the whole time on it. I'm kidding, but give it a give it a stab, and text me the questions if you have. And of course, when we get back the week after, you know, if you have questions over on Tuesday, we'll talk about that. Is there, is there like a very easier way of doing it? Easier as in simplifying Less. what you've already got here? Yes. <coughs> mm, anything that's going to be so-called easier is going to be more complicated. <laughs> yeah. How would you do it? I would, for one thing, use something called this switch statement. Switch. It would look like this. It would look like this. And by the way, let's make the Dropbox so that we can bail. Well, now I've got a follow-up question for you regarding uh, something on the UL. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop this.